Not the honourable member of Calgary Nose Hill. Um, one of my colleagues from the Liberal Party earlier, he talked about how times have changed in Canada and that we, we have all of these new technologies that when we originally thought about looking at broadcasting in Canada or content creation in Canada, no one ever really could have thought about. And he's right. The problem is, is what this bill, Bill C-11 does, is it's kind of like trying to play an MP4 on a VHS machine. It's just not going to work. Um, and what this bill does, for, for, for somebody who's trying to understand what this bill does and has really heard a bunch of different sides on the internet and whatever, I, I found this one, one, I think, really good, succinct explanation of what this does. The real motive of this bill, the Online Streaming Act, is simple. Streaming platforms and creators on them are bringing in more and more revenue, and legacy media wants a piece of the pie. Legacy broadcasting media companies like Bell Media, uh, Bell media Rogers, and Chorus Entertainment have built themselves a comfortable and oligopolistic domestic market in Canada during the broadcast era and dominated the media landscape for many de decades. But the or old narrow system isn't working anymore. Television broadcast has been on the decline since 2014. People don't use cable TV or listen to radio to the same extent. Rather than building competing online services on terms that attract people, those legacy media giants want a cut of the profit from streaming services that are increasingly popular in the 21st century media market. And that's, yep. that's really what we have here. And, and let me be clear, like the lobbyists from legacy media, they're all over this, as are the lobbyists from streaming services. And they each want parliament to do what is in their best interest. It's our job here to come up with what is in the best interest of the Canadian public. And this bill doesn't get it, it doesn't get it done, right? I fully support um, diverse voices and new emerging artists creating content in Canada. And frankly, many, many platforms uh, like YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, we have content influencers where you don't need to get a grant from the government to be able to have a platform. You don't need to break in through the door of Bell Media to get in to have content produced. You can have a massive voice and a massive platform with, without going through a gatekeeper. And I think that that's fantastic. But what we have here in this bill is success by the mainstream media lobbyists in ensuring that a new emerging disruptive source of content provision is brought into their old paradigm of operating so that they don't have to compete. And at best, I think at best, if this bill passes, all it does is really kind of sustain their profits in an old operating model for a few more years. We're gonna be back here in a few years anyways with new requests from them because the, the pace of change is so fast that the government trying to regulate, to, whenever a government has to regulate to keep an oligopoly sustained, it eventually collapses, it eventually fails, or eventually the public says enough, right? Particularly when it starts to detrimentally impact them. And there is a considerable risk of detrimental impact on, on individual Canadians. Um, the government will say that individual content creators are protected from this, but they're not. My understanding is that any sort of background information, for lack of a better term, that an individual content creator puts on a platform that may be subject to these new rules under this bill would then be subject to either regulation or mo like some sort of monetary penalty, who knows, under the provisions of these bills. And that's just not acceptable. What we're doing with that is we're actually stifling new emerging talent who speak from a new emerging voice, a new emerging generation. And, and what we're trying to do is, is, is basically say the gatekeepers of the last several decades that we should be propping their old model up through restrictive regulation that does not even come close to the universe that we're all operating on, right? Like, I mean, I feel like, and I'm gonna date myself by saying this, you know, I grew up with the raccoons and 
Fraggle Rock. I'm that's my generation. But like when they were producing Fraggle Rock, Mr. Speaker, I don't even think that Star Trek could have thought about TikTok. Right? <coughs> so why are we trying to come up with a regulatory model from my childhood? That's <laughs> I mean, I'd like to think I'm young and hip and cool, but I you mean, are. you know, that that remains a subject for debate, which could come up in questions and comments. But, you know, I, I, in all seriousness, uh, Madam Speaker, and I'm just looking for a time check here because I... Four and a half. Thank you, Madam Speaker. <laughs> I, I, there, there, this could have been done. This, this bill could have been approached in a much better way. And how I think I would have approached it if I had been min the minister in charge is I would have understand, understood the bias of the lobbyists that were coming forward to my bureaucrats on both sides of this issue, both from streaming platforms and from legacy media. I would have looked beyond the political, the near-term political ramifications of, of content creators that benefit from the existing system and said, look, how can we ensure that those that are on all of those existing platforms aren't negatively impacted, but at the same time that we're not stifling the, the potential of these disruptive new technologies. And that's, you know, if you want another recent analogy of this, and if you want to see into the future of what this bill really looks like, it's, it's Uber. Do you remember about 10 years, Madam Speaker? Everybody was saying, you know, trying to get municipalities, different levels of government to pass regulations to prevent Uber from operating. Well, that didn't go so well, right? We have Uber, and, and I'm glad for it. I use Uber all the time. But the reality is when you have a disruptive technology that is popular and transforms culture, you, you can't like trying to stifle it with government to, 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 to prop up an old way of doing things, it really doesn't work. I wish the government had gone to, to, to traditional media and said, okay, if you feel that you aren't able to compete in this environment and that there's a public benefit to, to, to us intervening, then explain that. But we, that's not the debate that we're having here. The, the, the debate that this bill puts forward on behalf of the government, the assumption is, is that the old way is the only way, and that we should be doing everything pop possible to prop up the old way of doing things without you know, really forcing the old way to, to innovate. And if Canada is supposed to be an innovative nation, the last thing you want to do to new disruptive technology and innovation is send a signal that this is a hostile environment for, for new innovations to take root. I mean, I know a lot has been said on this bill, and I want to reiterate, I am concerned about the overreach of the CRTC, that's the main regulator here, in terms of the ability to regulate individual content. Um, the regulator itself has sort of implied in committee testimony that they already have the ability to do this, they just maybe don't want to right now. That really frightens me. Um, I. I and that said, I also think that there's a, a whole corollary discussion around social media platforms and how that um, has, has changed debate in this place and how it's calcified beliefs in this country. But at the end of the day, we still have to ensure that Canadians have freedom of speech. And how we usually square that circle is through education. I, I think that this bill is a giant mess, Madam Speaker. It's it, the, like the, the concept behind it of how do we promote Canadian content and artists, that's, that's something that's worthy of study. That's something that I am interested in and I am supporting. But the, this bill itself and every person in here has said that it's, it needs to go back to the drawing board. So with that, I move, seconded by the member from Louis Saint Laurent, that the motion be amended by deleting all the words after the word that and substituting the following. Bill C-11, an act to amend the Broadcasting Act to make related and consequential amendments to other acts be not now read a second time, but that the order be discharged, the bill withdrawn, and the subject matter hereof referred to the Standing Committee on Canadian Heritage. Let's go back to the drawing board, Madam Speaker. Let's take the concept. Let's study it. Let's work across party lines to come up. We can all support ra rather than ramming something down people's throats uh, that, frankly, again, is trying to play an MP4 on a Betamax.
your opportunity. So for questions and comments? Order. Ms. Rempel Gardner, seconded by Mr. Deltel, moves the following a sub amendment that the motion be amended oh. by. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, that the motion uh, by the moves the following amendment that the motion be amended by deleting all the words after the word that and substituting the following. Bill C-11, an act to amend the Broadcasting Act, and to make related and consequential amendments to other acts be not now read a second time, but that the order be discharged, the bill withdrawn, and the subject matter thereof referred to the Standing Committee on Canadian Heritage. The, sub the amendment is in order. Questions and comments? Questions and commentaires?